Today we're going to be talking about graphing rational functions. And a rational function is a function where you have a polynomial on the top, a polynomial on the bottom. And you're going to have, we're going to have vertical asymptotes and we're going to have horizontal asymptotes. And we've kind of dealt with those in the last section where we graph translations of rational functions. In this case, we have a vertical asymptote Okay, where our function is undefined, we're never going to cross this vertical asymptote when our bottom function equals zero. And horizontal asymptotes. You want to make sure you memorize these rules. These rules are challenging for many students, but if you think about them, they're going to make sense. You can have at most one horizontal asymptote because you have to follow one of these three conditions. So if the degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom, we have an oblique asymptote, which is going to look like a line. It's going to be something in y equals mx plus b. If our degree of the bottom, or I'm sorry, of our top is less than the bottom, that means the bottom is getting bigger faster. So I'm going to have a small number over a really big number. That's y equals 0. And then if our degrees are equal, the top and bottom, as we get really, really big, are getting big the same at the same amount. So you're going to have the leading coefficient of P over Q. So if it was something like 3x squared minus 2 over x plus 1, your asymptote, horizontal asymptote would be y equals 3. If this was squared, we would have to do long division. We'd have an oblique asymptote. If it was the other way and the bottom was squared, then we would have um, y equals 0 being our asymptote. And we're going to do one of each one of these cases. OK, graphing rational functions. Identify the zeros, asymptotes, y-intercept, and graph. So I lead us through each one of these things that's going to help us graph our function. So these zeros. Zeros are when y equals 0. y is a fancy name for f of x, so our whole function equals 0. The only time a fraction can equal 0 is if the numerator equals 0. So really all I have to do is set the top equal to 0 to get my zeros. Subtract the 4 over. I divide by 2. And I recommend you write this as a point so that you realize, hey, I'm graphing a point. Let's jump down to y-intercept next because y -inter asymptotes are a little bit more complicated. y-intercept is when x equals 0. If I make x equal 0, that term goes away and that term goes away because they're both 0, so it's 4 over 1. So that's actually a really easy point to find. Now the asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are easier than horizontal. So we have, we're going to have a vertical asymptote and we're going to have a horizontal asymptote. Remember your vertical asymptote happens when the denominator equals 0. So x plus 1 equals 0. That's going to be x equals negative 1. And then horizontal asymptote, we look at the degree of the top. The degree of the top is 1. The degree of the bottom is 1. So they're equal. So it's the ratio of 2 over 1. So it's a line. It's horizontal, a horizontal line. y equals 2 over 1 which is 2. Now, something to consider. When you have your asymptotes, and when you have one vertical asymptote, so this is just an idea of one vertical asymptote happening, they're going to be in dueling cor corners, I call them. So it's going to look something like this, or they're going to be something like this. And all of these points are going to help us determine which dueling corners they're going to be in. Okay, so let's actually go through and graph this. One, two, three, four, five. 
I'm just putting in some tick marks. I don't actually give us a grid on this because we're just getting a sketch. And I found through the years that it's just easier if I don't give you guys a grid. Okay, so we had our zero, which was zero, negative two. I'm sorry, negative two, zero, negative two, zero. So put that point down. That's going to be important. You had your y-intercept was zero, four. So one, two, three, four. So your graph has to go through those points. Draw in your vertical asymptote. Your vertical asymptote was x equals negative one. Your horizontal asymptote was y equals 2. Now you know it has to go through these points and it has to be in dueling corners. So my guess is it's going to be in these corners. It's going to come from the top of this horizontal or vertical asymptote and go towards y equals 2. Now, if this piece goes up positive, this one's going to come from the negative piece and look like that. And realize that those graphs kind of look like the translations we did yesterday. Okay, graphing rational functions. Now I have two vertical asymptotes, okay, and it's going to look a little different. So again, let's go through and find everything. Zeros, top equal to zero. So I recommend you, again, write that as a point so you know you're putting down this point. Let's do y-intercept next. Y-intercept, you make all the x's be 0. So I have a 0 there, a 0 there, and a 0 there. So I just kind of cover them up. I have 12 over a negative 12. That's the point 0, negative 1. Okay. We now have to find our vertical asymptotes. So set each one of these pieces on the bottom equal to zero. That's how I get x equals negative three and x equals a positive four. For my horizontal asymptote, if I were to multiply out this bottom, I would start with an x squared. I don't really care what the rest of it is. I just need to know the power on the top versus the power on the bottom. Power on the top is smaller, so my bottom is getting bigger faster. Remember, horizontal asymptotes are what happens as x gets really, really big or really, really small. It's kind of the end behavior. So my horizontal asymptote, the bottom is getting bigger faster, so it's going to be a small number over a really big number. That's going to be close to y equals 0. Now, we always have one horizontal asymptote. In this case, we have two vertical asymptotes. You have basically four possibilities. And what you need to remember is that in the middle, you could have something that looks like this, something that looks like this. Or, which is an x cubed function, I know we didn't study those, or you could have a parabola in the middle. Or we could have a parabola in the middle, either a parabola facing up or a parabola facing down. Realizing that, that's going to help you. And typically the ones I'm going to be giving you Okay, figure out what's in the middle first, and then, okay, this ends up this way, so I'm going to be down this way. So on either side of the asymptote, they're going to the opposite places. Okay, so I'm going up this way, so I'm going to come from the negative and go towards my horizontal asymptote. So keep that in mind. I'm ending down. I have to start up on the other side. So I'm ending up there. I have to end down there. Okay, so in general, these are what your graphs are going to be looking like. Okay, so let's put all this fun stuff on our graph. I think it's fun. Granted, I'm a math teacher. I 
know this is really exciting to watch. This is when double speed would be helpful. Or I could just tell you a fun math joke. I got no fun math jokes for these. Oh, I do have a fun one, but it's not quite in a, it's not quite appropriate for school. Um, you'll have to go ask Mr. Fryman. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's start putting stuff on the graph. Let's put our horizontal asymptote y equals zero. I like to draw it in just so that I know it's there. And sometimes you can cross your horizontal asymptotes in these graphs, so keep that in mind. Vertical asymptote, x equals negative 3. x equals 4. Um, your 0 is negative 2, 0. And then we have a y-intercept of 0, negative 1. So since I know I cross here, my graph crosses there, and yes, it can cross a horizontal asymptote, and I cross here, and then I don't go back up again because I have no other asymptote, it's going to look like that x to the third um, graph in the middle. So I'm going to come down, and it's going to look something like this. Okay, and giving me a sketch is fine. Now, I've told you guys that you go down this way, typically, yes. It's going to be up here. Plug in a number over here just to figure out whether or not you're positive or negative. Okay, so like figure out, I'm going to plug in f of 5. And I'm just worried about just double checking, making sure I'm above and not below. Making sure Mrs. Marnell didn't throw me a curveball. So when I do f of 5, I'm just worried about whether I'm positive or negative. So on the top, I would have a positive number. On the bottom, I would have a positive times a positive, so that's a positive number. So I know, I've confirmed that I'm up here. So I can draw this piece in here. Plug in something like f of negative 5, something on the other side of the asymptote to confirm that you're going to be below. On the top, we would be negative. That first quantity, negative 5 plus 3, would be a negative number. Negative 5 times minus 4 is also a negative number. So I'd have a negative over a positive. So I know I'm going to be negative. That's just confirming that I'm going to be negative. And now your graph is good. Okay, again, finding zeros. Sometimes if you have a quadratic on the top, I would recommend we factor. And that factors to x plus 5, x minus 3. And hopefully the top is going to factor. I'm going to give them to you where they're going to factor. Our books sometimes will not give them to us where they factor. So just be aware of that. That also helps us in finding our zeros. Because remember, we said, the top equal to 0, so x plus 5 equal to 0, x minus 3 equal to 0, so we get negative 5, 0, and a 3, 0. Now for your asymptotes, vertical asymptote, again, always when the bottom equals 0, so that's x equals, x minus 1 equals 0, so that's x equals 1. In this case, we have an oblique asymptote. So we need to do long division. If you have the bottom being a linear function, the top being a quadratic, we can do um, synthetic division. So in your box, you put a 1. And then the coefficients for the top. Bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Add them. And you can stop there because I don't care about the rest of it. So your equation of your oblique asymptote is y equals x plus 3. Because I reduced my exponent by 1, so x plus 3. Okay, so that's my oblique asymptote. And then we need to find now our y-intercept. y-intercept, make x is equal to 0. 
So that is a 0, 15. Okay, so let's now put all this on our graph. Okay, y-intercept. Um, we have a vertical asymptote at 1. And that is a straight line. That's why I have straight edges for you guys to use. Okay. Um, so we have this point, we have that, we have our x-intercepts, are at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then we have that oblique asymptote. Remember, that's a line. It was a line x plus 3. x plus 3, slope of 1. Now again, your graph is going to come and be in dueling corners. So it's going to be, I call it like vertical angles in this case. So it's either going to be this and this side or this side and this side. Now I realize it's not going to be this side and this side because I don't have any points over there. So I come from my vertical asymptote going towards your oblique asymptote. You're never going to cross an oblique asymptote. Okay, so I kind of knew that. So I'm coming from the other side of my oblique asymptote going up towards the other side of my vertical asymptote. So that's what that graph looks like. Okay. Graphing a rational function. I've given us a hint with a hole. I don't know if you guys caught that. You probably didn't because it's getting to be a long video. I realize that. But this is going to be the shortest example probably ever in the history of our math class. So factor the top. Notice what happens. Top cancels. So there's a hole. There's a hole at x minus 3 equals to 0 or x equals 3. So when you're graphing the function f of x equals x plus 3 with a hole, you're literally going to have a hole in your function at 3. When I plug in 3 into this function, I get a value of 6. So you're graphing. You don't even need any of this, and I'm going to give that to you guys. Actually, you need the hole, but I'm not going to tell you it has a hole. Okay? All you need to know is how to graph that. So hopefully you know how to graph the equation of a line, x plus 3. is a line with a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 1. So, I use my straight edge. Now, there's a hole in the function. Basically, we've taken a number out of the domain. So, here, at x equals 3, I should have a hole. And we are done. I apologize for the long video. Um, you won't have a video tonight for we usually spend a few days on this section. Thank you, for guys, for being patient with me. Please make sure the lesson summary is submitted on time.